Hey, this is Retro Thomas, and I'm back with another uh, game development video journal. Um, you may notice you're not looking at the little green field with the guy running around on it, and that's for good reason. I've spent the last couple of weeks learning about Blender, learning animating, uh, rigging, and trying to improve my art pipeline. So if you follow me on Twitter or have checked out my Tumblr blog, you'll already know a bit about what I've done. What I'm trying to do and I've actually just successfully done for the first time, is taken a 3D model, I've rigged and animated it, I've exported the animation, I've generated sprites of that animation, and put essentially a 3D model into a 2D game, giving me the advantages of 2D and 3D, and the disadvantages of neither, which, to my way of thinking, is I can have my artist, aka Candace, my wife, um, she will model and texture 3D models, and instead of having to draw, you know, high quality sprites from eight angles for every frame of, of tons of animations, I can simply create animations for humanoid figures, and I can use them over and over, whether it's a robot, an alien uh, race, or various humans. So all she has to do is create another space marine, another cyborg, whatever it is, and they will have all their cover, running, shooting, uh, all the animations that I create will already be able to be applied to that model instantly. I can export sprite sheets and put it right in the game and have it look 3D and high quality and awesome um, with pretty much no work once I've set up the initial animations and everything. Sounds ambitious and I was kind of worried the last few weeks that it wouldn't work but I've just had a proof of concept today and successfully did this. So um, for this video I want to show you my uh, workflow of what I came up with and how this worked. Now you may notice you're staring at Link. Um, he was a high quality model I found online for, for free just to use to tinker with. So I just did that for the sake of having something fun to stare at. Um, this funny looking skeleton thingy is the armature that I created. And the armature allows me in Blender to animate Link uh, more easily. I can take these bones and I can move them out. And I've uh, followed um, really good tutorial. And I have full inverse kinematics set up for the, uh, the skeleton. And I've weight painted the. Um, let me see if I can show you that actually. Uh, object mode. Let me select this and weight paint. So you see, when I select a bone, I'm able to paint the pixels that should move on the mesh along with that bone. So then, when I select, you know, the uh, the head, the whole torso doesn't move just the head because I've painted them that way. And then the armature controls the mesh, and it has some special constraints built into it. So, for example, if I move this bone down here, um, pose mode, then the leg moves in a mostly realistic manner uh, along with it. I can bend the knee, I can do everything. So all this helps me to put the figure where I want it to be when it comes to animation. Um, let me open up the file I actually was working with. And I actually did uh, a walking animation. So you can see that here. And I just did this. It took me you know, a week and a half or so to learn all this stuff, but I followed a tutorial. I have a little bit of experience with animation for Second Life, so that helped. Um, so I'm going to be able to create all my animations this way, and instead of Link, I'll just take the mesh that Candace creates of you know, the main character or enemies or whatever, and I can just drop it right on top of this armature, and I'll have a full set of animations ready to go to save myself a whole bunch of time. So from here... I took this animation and I saved this through uh, an exporter I found as a DirectX file. I found a program called Fragmotion, which I can't show you in this video because it's on a Windows laptop I have. It's a Windows only program, unfortunately. Um, and that program will take this model and it'll generate a sprite sheet. Let me load that for you now so you can see what it looks like. And I had to actually combine it all together with another program because it came out as a bunch of um, columns. So I combined all of these sprites into this image. And let me zoom in here and move over. So you can see I have all 20 frames of the animation going down top to bottom. And then I have all eight angles. So over here he's facing north, east, south. I'm sorry, northwest, southeast, and then all the in-between. So I decided to do eight angles. Now you might say, why do the feet look so stupid? Um, I had a problem with my armature of some sort. When I exported it, the uh, the feet went flying off, and then so you can see right here, frame one they're fine, frame two they're disconnected from the body. 
and they slowly come back and connect with the body for the rest of the walking frames. Um, that sucked, and I've been on the blenderartist.org forum a lot this week asking questions, and people have been really helpful and awesome there, which I very much appreciate. Um, so I have a question up right now asking, why the hell do my feet go flying off? And I'm hopeful that they can help me figure it out, because I haven't been able to track down why this happens. The, uh, the ability to export out of Blender and bring stuff into other programs with animation is tenuous at best. So I'm hopeful I can iron that out, because it's... it's you know, my, my workflow really depends on some stuff that's a little iffier than I would like. But it's amazing to be able to take these models and turn them into these sprite sheets based on animations I did. It's going to save me a bunch of time, make everything look great off of um, high-quality textured 3D models. Now let me load up my game, and I want to show you what this looks like in the actual game. Alright, here's my game. It looks pretty silly because the, uh, you know, the model isn't textured, it isn't in high quality right now, and it isn't uh, shadowing properly or... You know, this is just placeholder stuff to prove that this worked. I was so excited it did work, I wanted to hurry up and make a video to show you. So, um, right now it just picks a standing, uh, a pose out of that walking sprite sheet for when the character is standing. But when I click, I essentially have full, high quality, 3D motion. And this is all based off that sprite sheet file, which I'm very excited about. Now you can see it looks stupid because it jerks around and the feet go flying off, but that's something I'll figure out. So hopefully in the not too distant future, I'll actually be able to have some uh, some nice final looking artwork as opposed to you know placeholder art. Um, I'll have all eight directions working instead of just the four cardinal directions, and I'll start adding uh, running animation. I'll, I'll learn how to attach the gun object or various pieces of armor and equipment to the character and export out some great looking stuff um, as 2D sprites of 3D models. I kind of rushed through this a little bit, so I hope that makes sense. Um, that's the workflow that I'm using for this. It was very tricky to set up and learn, but like I said, it's going to be a huge advantage in the long run because I'm going to be able to have great 3D art, and I won't have to have my artist draw you know, hundreds and hundreds of sprites per character. I'll be able to have really high-quality artwork for what's basically a, a two-person <laughs> indie game project. So I hope this makes sense. Please feel free to ask any questions if you're curious about how this works and to leave your usual helpful and encouraging comments. And um, I'm going to keep on, keep on rocking and try to get back soon with another video of some better looking stuff that works a little more smoothly. So thanks for watching. Take it easy.